For more than a century, this iconic Great Falls building has stood strong. It served as a school for many years until it closed in the mid-1970s. It reopened in the late 1970s as Paris Gibson Square Museum of Art. Coming up on this episode of We're No Damn Experts, we're talking with the museum's executive director and curator about the contemporary art exhibits, educational opportunities, and events. Best damn podcast, the best damn town. Want to get up, get ready to get down. With its big white sky and the wild river tank, if you want to go, we can take you there to Great Falls, Montana. Welcome to the greatest damn town in Montana, Great Falls. I'm Rebecca Ingham. I'm Shannon Newth. And And we're we're No No Damn Damn Experts. I am so excited for today. Well, good. I'm glad. I don't remember the last time (laughs) we did a podcast on a recorded one on a Monday, so. That's true. Hopefully this goes well. (laughs) Case of the Mondays. We'll be good. We'll be Um, good. But... In studio today, it's not just Shannon and I. No, who's, you're welcome. <laughs> who's here? Yeah, no yeah. joke. For, they know from past episodes. <laughs> they like when we have guests. Yes, we have Sarah and Nicole from Paris Gibson Square Museum of Art. We're excited to talk all about the square, the mission, the things that happen there, why it's such an iconic place in Great Falls. So welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, we're glad to have you. <laughs> Good job. Wow, Woo-hoo. in unison already. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so first off, let's just do do a little introduction, who you what? are, what you do. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Uh, Nicole, kick us off, because our guests have heard Sarah on the podcast before. We didn't do quite a formal introduction, but Nicole, who are <laughs> oh. you? How long you've been here? What's your um, deal? <laughs> I am Nicole Evans. I am the curator of exhibitions and collections at Paris Gibson Square Museum of Art. And I have been doing that for the square since 2019. But oh, I have wow. been in Great Falls for 10 years. Okay. Where are you from originally? I am originally born and raised in San Diego, California. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. well, shout out to California guests last yes. night. Yes. Oh, Got yeah. one of your hometown girls here. Yeah. Who's that? <laughs> That's you. Oh, yeah. Okay. I thought you were talking about someone else. Yeah. No, <laughs> you're it. You're the hometown girl. <laughs> you're the hometown girl. Who, who knows? Maybe yeah. we'll get some San Diegans exactly. coming out. Exactly. Have you always been in the art world or is this new yes, to you? Yes, oh, okay. yes, yes. Um, like Sarah. You know, I've been in the arts. I've been in a museum professional, an art historian, um, for over 20 years now. Oh, wow. I, yeah, so I th- I did the whole thing, you know, yeah. undergraduate degree at UCLA mm. in art history, graduate degree um, in art history and museum studies at Tufts University in Boston. Wow. So, and I've worked in different institutions across the U.S. Mm-hmm. So what drew you into that? into that profession because that's one where you need you need a lot of schooling you need a lot of (laughs) a lot of education a lot of experience what what drew you to that you know um when I started my career out as a young person deciding what I wanted to become it actually was in the sciences oh really so my original track was to be in the sciences as a dentist or a veterinarian. Oh, hey, that but, took a turn. <laughs> you know, things changed over time. Yeah. And then, um, <laughs> you know, in school, you get put into these advanced placement courses. And so then they, I was put into advanced placement art. <clears throat> and I was already a fan of history. So you're good at everything is what you're saying. No, Both I'm sciences not. and art. If I was good <laughs> in the sciences, I'd probably still be there. <laughs> fair, fair. <laughs> so then, you know, I actually, you know, started out in the arts and then through an amazing professor of art history named Professor Barbara Blackman. Oh. Um, she introduced me to the world of art history in a, in a beautiful, informative intellectual way and I was permanently drawn in Mm. and uh, so she supported my career as an art historian (laughs) from the beginning and I'm truly thankful to her so are you Mm -hmm. an artist as well or just the historian part like do you paint I I wouldn't call myself an artist but I do know how to do those things and I tried to double major at UCLA (laughs) I tried to get into the fine arts department to double major but you know, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of um, places that money has to go when you're a student. <laughs> and so 
the departments um, decided that it wasn't favorable to either of them to do that. So I stayed with my original track in art history and I'm forever mm. grateful. So mm. Great. it was good. I asked mm -hmm. this next question um, not really knowing anything myself of this, so you could say whatever you want, and I'll be Ooh. like, oh, okay. Um, do you have a, a preferred... Which, which means you could pretty much lie, and we won't know. <laughs> Other people will check you on this, but I won't. Uh, do you have a favorite or a most intriguing type of art, like or type of art within history or time period oh. of art in history? Um, a lot of people ask me that question. Okay. And they also ask me, who's your favorite artist? Okay. And I actually do not have, Don't an have any. Yeah. Oh, Sarah. <laughs> wow. Sarah Justice is wow, my obviously. favorite artist. <laughs> get on the mic, Sarah. Just, just ridicule her. I know. She's silent here. We have an artist in the studio, yeah, and I she's know. like, uh, yeah. I don't like any artists. <laughs> yeah. No, that's not that I don't like. What I what it is is like I just appreciate so much from so many different people that I just uh, and so many styles. Sure. And I think from an art historian's perspective, that is really kind of the way that you maneuver the world of art is mm -hmm. you really understand the way it, it interweaves with society and history and how artists learn from one another and the things that happen. So it's not about like having a favorite really it's just about really understanding what's going on with each person and what's happening in the time that the artwork is created yeah. and i think it would yeah. almost be real helpful to not have a favorite because then you can be a little more objective like yeah. you've seen like some graphic designers they get a style and it's mm -hmm. hard for them to do something different than that mm -hmm. and so if you're constantly kind of framing the lens of oh this is what i like or this is my favorite right then it might be a little harder that's my own <laughs> analysis mm -hmm. that I'm making up on the go. I mean, well, I have I a thought too, that. I think when it comes to fine art and when you're understanding it from a historical standpoint, it's not about a pretty picture. And mm -hmm. I honestly think the average mm. person or people that don't study art, I mean, that's what they see. I like yeah. that because I can either relate to it or it looks like something I'd want to put on my living room wall. Right. Yeah. And that's what most people go to. But when you're studying the history behind art and the import importance of it in, in culture and society mm. and how it's documenting life humanity yeah. you look at it in such a different light That's it's not really about a pretty point. picture anymore mm -hmm. yeah. it's about the content yeah and yes. process mm -hmm. of how the work was made and you know yeah i mean pretty pictures <laughs> serve a place right. too you right know? Yes, we look at things do. sometimes yeah. and fall exactly. in love just because yeah. we like the color of it right. <laughs> or the movement of it yeah you know, the brush strokes or you know or anyway. it's just beautiful mm -hmm. yeah period just straight up beautiful yeah mm -hmm. but i think that background also after you've kind of liked a piece, understanding more from like Nicole's perspective, that history component, you dig deeper, you find a little bit more emotion to connect with what mm -hmm. is happening there, which I think is cool and why, you know, I like going to art exhibits and having someone explain some of the things to me because mm -hmm. it just deepens your connection with that yeah. art. So well, definitely, I think a lot of people just you know there's misconceptions that it just it comes so easy and they just kind of throw this vision up on the palette or clay or whatever but there's like so much more to it and it's also an evolving process right like I mean much of things in history it builds off of mm -hmm. I would imagine the era that came before it mm -hmm. but that's such an interesting and <laughs> like perspective to remember too is before we had cameras before we had that that's also like how we documented life it wasn't just a, right. a form of expression. It was also how we documented everything. Right. I mean, even Sarah can attest to this really deep understanding of art and the skill and the technique and the knowledge that you have to have to be an artist, mm. to perform the work that you know is, is, is not easily, doesn't come easy. It takes years of understanding and practice and work and you know, and, and I think that that's part of what we do at the square is to really get people to understand the levels of under of education and knowledge and experience that um, artists, museum staff, people involved in the arts have to really go through um, in order to produce experiences for the community so that mm -hmm. they can digest, you know, even just a nugget of everything that we're doing. You know, that, that's really what we're trying to do at the museum is to 
get someone to say like they have to us before we're like, you know what? I'm starting to understand <laughs> that even if something is ugly, I just <laughs> like it. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> you know, but why, you know, yeah. and then they can start to form a way of speaking and saying why. You yeah. Know, like, why do you what, what is your appreciation for mm. this work of art? Hmm. What comes to your mind? And we don't necessarily give them a yes or no, but allow people to have the voice hmm. on, to help them have their own voice and um, express their thoughts on it. Mm -hmm. So before I lose my thought, because it's going to happen, <laughs> so we can move to Sarah, but you, you kind of say that. And then I think of the, the, for lack of a better word, the garbage pillars that exist or the label pillars on the second floor exhibit. Oh, the ruins by Terry Carson. There we go. Mm -hmm. That is not something that you would like just sit down and go, this is what I'm going to create today. Right. And it makes sense. But when you see it, you're like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. And to see so many different elements, for me, it was a lot of different emotions of look at all this beauty that is captured in things people have discarded right you know that mm -hmm. kind of juxtaposition of that emotion and just to walk through and wander those pillars is really interesting so mm -hmm. well done <laughs> oh well done to terry carson <laughs> we just get to tell people about it which yeah. is the exciting part you know and we're really thankful to have that work in our institution and as a, he's a he's a pillar in the arts community here in mm -hmm. montana so if you haven't had a chance to come to see those pillars, you should definitely come to the museum and check them out because it's an experience and it really is meant to be that way hmm. and to take time to think about it and yeah, what does scale have to do in your experience, right? Yeah. Like mm. how did you feel not only in what you were looking at, but how did you experience the work as you walked through and around it? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. I'm going to switch to Sarah. Yeah. Let her introduce herself. Mm -hmm. She's an actual... She's an artist. She <laughs> creates. She actually is. <laughs> She's a real one. She's not like us who pretend. Us. No, I can't <laughs> even try to pretend. To pretend. Mm -hmm. um, so Sarah, how long have you been with the square? And then give all the same details. And then your last question that you have to answer, which is should be pretty easy. Like how do you create art and convey things that um, you want people to feel and then make sure they feel it? Mm -hmm. Go. That's, that's a big that's, question. That's a great question. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> um, Sarah. I, I've been at the square for since 2017. Oh, wow. And I started out at the museum as education director. And then a year and a half in, moved into uh, interim executive director and then into the title as executive director. So <laughs> I've been time. the executive yeah. director full time for four years and then nine months prior to that as interim mm. running the education program and the museum. Um, I have no big deal. I have, I have three right. degrees. Yeah. I have an associate's degree in interior design. Yeah. I was one of those lost teenagers at the age of 18 <laughs> going, what am I going to do? And my mom's like, we're moving you to Atlanta, Georgia. Oh. <laughs> so you can study interior design because really you can't get in school anywhere else at this point. <laughs> and Thanks for that vote <laughs> of confidence. Yeah. But I'm glad she did. I mean, yeah. it was a wonderful experience and really realized how I do enjoy drawing. Mm. And that's where I didn't take any art classes in high school, but I do come from a background of family members that are artists. Mm on the justice side of my family. So mm -hmm. I've been around art my whole life and I've always, you know, did it as a hobby, you know, um, from grade school on through high school and then got my degree in interior design. And I didn't, and then I lived as an artist for uh, over two decades. Wow. Um, running a business, doing wall murals and cabinet and furniture refinishing and wall finishes for 20 years. Wow. In the Atlanta area? Yeah, in Atlanta and Tampa, Florida. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And that was wonderful, lucrative business. Um, but then at the age of 36, you know, my back decided it didn't like that physical labor anymore. Mm, yeah. I was working a lot like a contractor um, and doing mainly commissioned work. And then I was also selling my paintings, oil and encaustic paintings, landscape paintings and galleries in Texas, Atlanta and North Carolina. Mm. And then at 36 years old, I said, I'm going back to college. I'm going to finally get a bachelor's of fine arts degree. Yeah. Woo, good for you. And I went back to school full time and ran my business on the side. 
right? Wow. Put myself through college and then went right into a master's of fine art here at the University of Montana. So that's what brought me to Montana from okay. Atlanta. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. And I graduated in 2017 and then hey. two months later got the job <laughs> hey. here and moved here. And then you were executive director. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you know, as interesting as I had no plans to be an executive director of sure. a nonprofit organization. Yeah. That oh, wasn't really? even in that I mean, it seems like house. every young girl's dream. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to giggle I'm sure the two of you have stories, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Uh, My plan was to be a professor. I love to teach, Mm. you know, and I still Mm -hmm. teach. Um, I'm teaching a figure drawing class right now for the museum. Yeah. And teach when I can um, or workshops here or there. But I just love teaching. And then I have a studio practice on the side. So I make my artwork in in the evenings and on the weekends. So you don't Mm. sleep. When I can. Yeah. I get my sleep, but, you know, I don't have children. Yeah. You know, my life's a little different. It does allow for me to have the freedom. Sure. And my, my paintings and sculptures and drawings are, are like my children yeah. in a way. Yeah. yeah. For me. So, you know, the big easy question to answer. <laughs> oh, I want to do my art. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because I think, I don't know, I'm not an artist, but if I were to create a work of art and someone felt what I was feeling when I made it, like what I wanted people to experience and they did it, I'd be like, hot dang. <laughs> what I it did. worked. <laughs> right. <laughs> you got to think someone who is an artist mm-hmm. can kind of say, this is the way I want to do the lighting because I know this will pull this emotion or this is the way I want to mm-hmm. form this up because I know this is the way people will see it. Is that true? Am I making that up? Is well, there... I, I just, you know, I mean, the artwork that I make really just comes from the heart and my soul, mm. you know, and when it's coming authentically from that, yet years and years of training and practice, you <laughs> right. know, I've been an artist and drawing and painting and, and sculpting for so many years now, it's just a natural thing I do. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't even know how to it's describe that. It's an extension that. of you. Yeah. 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 And when it comes authentic like that, and also... I'm really interested in classical renderings of mm. things and classical sculpture. Most people can relate to that, especially when I'm sculpting the human figure, mm. because you're going to relate to something you're used to seeing, right? So I feel like my artwork often does hit emotions with people pretty mm. pretty quickly. But I'm a highly sensitive person. I think it comes through the work just mm-hmm. naturally. I'm not really an abstract artist. I can mm. create abstractly, but I don't feel like it's authentic to mm. who I am per se. Mm-hmm. But design also coming from background of interior design. Yeah. yeah I know that too. Sure. That realm of decorative arts yeah. Yeah. versus fine art. There's, there's mm-hmm. a difference, but I've done both. Um, and you said it's a part of your, your, your heart and soul basically, mm-hmm. but you are, this is art is bear their souls right when they when they create things right. how do you for 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 both of you but maybe more for sarah how do you mm. manage that just kind of mentally emotionally oh w- once you've created something you're bearing your soul there and it's your heart like, oh i don't like well, it in the yeah. beginning <laughs> it's funny like i would make things and then not want to sell it sure oh yeah that's so not it real took handy. a long time to, yeah. to realize, oh, no, I can let this go Yeah, because but that I'm not making it. Too. You make it for yourself in the beginning, Yeah, but then it's a gift. I see it as a gift to the world at yeah. large or right. to other, someone else that may be able to connect to it. Yeah. And if mm-hmm. they can, then it's going to be doing something for them. Yeah. And that's why artists create work mm. is yeah. for yeah. others, I think. Yeah. Initially for yourself yeah. and then for the person that may purchase it yeah and i mean i think i work with a lot of the artists right Uh because they exhibit at the museum and um, bless her heart (laughs) we love them all but it's not an easy job i I can imagine well the artist mind you we hear it all the time Mm -hmm. the artist mind is just different different. than like the logical (laughs) side of the mind well you know this is how i see it i just think Artists are just like as varied as any other person Mm -hmm. on the street. And so you're dealing with different people and they have different views about their artwork. They have different views about how they want their artwork seen and they have different views about how they want their artwork spoken about. Mm. And at the end of the day, they decide whether or not they want to sell work or they don't want to sell work. And, you know, and it's it's a personal prerogative for each one of the artists that we work with. And the the methodology and the thought process is all very unique, just like each individual, Mm -hmm. you know, so it's. 
you know, for me, I work with the artists and, and I do a lot of creative writing. That's, you know, art historians. They do a lot of research and writing, creative writing to talk about the artwork. And, uh, you know, from my experience, I just learned to really tap into who the person is and then add my own personal perspective on what it is that they're doing. So when Sarah and I are working with all these different artistic minds, we we understand that, um, you know, it's just like working with any person that you don't know <laughs> and you're getting to know who they are. And, you know, and, and it's, it's a lot of um, relationship building and understanding and um, it's pretty amazing, really, it is. Well, and mm -hmm. I imagine there's a lot of trust that has to be built because they're mm -hmm. trusting you with their, their life's work and their soul on mm -hmm. display with a lot of this. And sometimes oh, telling that story because mm -hmm. you're putting together exhibits or deciding what you want within an exhibit and what story you're looking to tell with that. Mm -hmm. That's not easy at all. <laughs> no, but no, Nicole no. is really good. I mean, you know, key here is being a really good listener. Mm. Nicole's a good listener. She's going to listen. Mm. To what these artists are saying to her but mm -hmm. she's also really thoughtful in putting together panel discussions bringing the artist in for um, discussions with the with the community here right. mm -hmm. and so that allows you know Nicole's voice when she's doing catalogs she's doing a lot of that writing but then also inviting these people to actually be interviewed by her mm. and yeah. people have a chance to really yeah. ask them and dive a little deeper maybe to you know, ask questions that maybe weren't answered in the discussion. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And invite other voices in the arts mm -hmm. as well to be other able experts. to share, mm -hmm. you know, because um, we all have different perspectives on where somebody is coming from. And artists also have their own cohort of individuals that work within the circles that they're working in and that really, truly understand and know what it is that they're doing or building because all of them are involved in the similar projects. So, uh, to be able to uh, allow individuals and their cohort and other experts outside of the museum to weigh in and, and share their knowledge with our community, it really helps to um, to really showcase and just show how much we care about disseminating this information mm -hmm. within the arts community and outside. Mm -hmm. And there's a thought I want to have on that when it comes to like, you know, an art historian and a fine artist. Mm -hmm for people to know that when people get a master's of fine art and even a bachelor's of fine art, you're studying art history too. So mm. these artists that have been artists all these years yeah. know a lot about the history <laughs> of art. Mm -hmm. We have to research it. We have to find where our work fits into the, the lineage mm. of art history throughout time, past and present. Mm -hmm. You know, so if I were to ever go in and talk about my artwork, I, I would be pointing to these things. Mm. Yeah, you know, yes. where does my inspiration come from? It's come from somewhere. It didn't come from nowhere. <laughs> it comes yeah. from years of looking at art and studying it. Mm. And then I find my own way from yeah. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm. I have just an off base question. <laughs> yeah. We like those. I'm, I'm cool with that. <laughs> All right. So here it comes. Like when you're writing something, it's obviously clear if you're going to plagiarize that you take the exact <laughs> words. Right. Does plagiarism happen in art? Because you're talking about being influenced. It's not like, even if you were to want to recreate a Charlie Russell work of art, you would still do it in your own style. Is right. it, is it plagiarism? possible even? Yes. There is? There is. I mean, that's But why isn't then that just oh. honoring also, like, that artist? That's where you got some... It seems I like a slippery slope. Of different it does. levels of what that could mean. I mean, there's there are definitely people who make a career out of copying artists' artwork and selling it, and that's illegal. That's in China. Mm. Well, it's everywhere. <laughs> I'm in Hungary. It's in it's huh. in it very okay. it's in lots of I've places, you know. Yeah. Hmm. But I know. I think what you're asking is like, how as an artist do you could develop your own visual voice, right? Well, of, that I mean, like, I get like inspired. Someone could replicate, let's right. say. 3D print a sculpture or like photograph a painting and then sell those prints. I get that kind of plagiarism mm -hmm. or whatever we're stealing. <laughs> but like if you create something original mm -hmm. and you know, you're just trying to recreate the same thing, is that the, is that plagiarism? Is that stealing? Technically it would be your own version of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, I think, 
I, well, I'll well, go ahead, Sarah. I'll, I'll, I'll chat a little a, bit and see if the, yeah, something. something comes to you. Yeah. But, you know, let's just say you have some students and you're teaching some students a technique. Mm -hmm. And we suggest that sometimes literally taking a photograph of something they like, mm -hmm. printing it in black and white, and then recreating it in your own way. Mm -hmm. That's practice. Mm -hmm. right. We're not selling it. We're not saying this was made by so-and-so. This is an original of someone else's mm -hmm. work. No. But artists, th I, I tell people this. Also, every single mark, shape, line, color has already been created, <laughs> and it's been created yeah. by Mother Nature. Mm. It's everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Outside, so if we think a single mark is original, it's. I, I would like yeah. to believe it's not. <laughs> yeah. It's just not. <laughs> sure. Mm -hmm. You know, but we're all influenced by other artists. I mean, there's mm -hmm. certain artists that I look at that I go, oh man, I love the way they do that. I'm going to give it a try. Mm -hmm. But right. if you were to put their work and my work next to it, there's there's nothing like, but there could be an element of right. something I appreciate about what they do mm -hmm. and make it my own. And it, it seems to add that power of what I'm looking for. That, mm. Um, mm. But I can't right. say that I've when you when you're an artist and you look at so much artwork all the time I'm around it all the time it's mm -hmm. hard it's interesting to see how it starts to come into Influence. my work without right. even me being aware of it mm. that's the part that's a trip yeah. yeah and I think that has to do with also social media and the mm -hmm. collective consciousness of mm -hmm. just being in the world today yeah um, you know art has gone through so many different phases in history and you know you know I think we're we're living in a period right now where it's all come together, you know, and people are influenced by, you know, Renaissance masters they are influenced by the, you know, by um, the expressionists or the impressionists. They're, in, they're influenced by conceptual artists or, or performance art. Or performance mm. art. And it's all just kind of coming together and people take what they need to express who they are and it all becomes part of a unique individual's experience and that's what you see mm. but in terms of like you know we can even just go to Andy Warhol you know yeah. he 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 took pictures he took pictures that professional photographers took and made them used them and reproduced them and colorized them and did different things with them and the way that he visualized it and organized it conceptually it created a different project you know mm -hmm. He wasn't working for Campbell's soup cans, but he replicated <laughs> hundreds of thousands of uh, Campbell's soup cans, but it wasn't the Campbell's soup can. It was the idea uh -huh. behind the soup cans yeah. that he was actually creating as art. To mm -hmm. know yeah. when people look at work, for instance, Jackson Pollock. Mm -hmm. Oh, I could easily do that, right? Everybody's like, <laughs> yeah. I can oh, sprinkle. Yeah. Do you know how many times I've had that thought process? <laughs> like, I can be an artist like this, and then you try. <laughs> no, <laughs> but I it's can't. not even about try. It's more of... He changed the course of right. art history by producing something that nobody was doing at that time. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we could do it. But guess who did it? He did yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he was doing something that people were not doing at the time. And he was classically trained. He yeah. could paint portraits. Mm -hmm. He could do all of that. And then he mm. and it, chose and it, to yeah. use industrial paints to try something new. Exactly. Mm. And that is a specific. And then that's like an art historical moment, too. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, so when he was doing that, it was a particular period in time. These things were happening. And this mm. is what came previous to that that caused this to happen. Mm. You know, today, it's different. You experience that period in time no longer exists it's the remnants of that that we are looking at and when we see that that contemporary work of art from that type period we don't really understand unless you really are interested in learning about it what it happened there that made mm. that a pivotal moment in the history of art to cause such disarray and shock <laughs> for the community so you're, as a con new artist working today, you have that in your back pocket as an understanding for how things change. But if you do create work like Pollux, you'd really have to understand and explain how yours is different and hmm. what it means that yours exists in a completely different context. It doesn't exist in that context. 
You have you to know. be able to defend it. Yeah. And that's mm-hmm. one thing about going wow. to art school does. I mean, you have to defend everything you do. Mm-hmm. Wow. You have to research and write. So just because I have a fine arts degree doesn't mean mm-hmm. I didn't have to write and research and yeah. study theory yeah. that was very complicated. You know, what mm-hmm. is beauty? Mm-hmm. What is the sublime? Those conversations are <laughs> so challenging, yeah. actually. Yeah. And confusing and difficult. Yeah. And those and discussions have gone back. And that's all art Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> like that's everything I do. Yeah. Well, well I was just thinking yeah. about going, you know, and getting a fence post and painting a face on it because I'm in <laughs> love it. with the Lee Steen collection. I'm like, mm-hmm. I could do that, but the reality is, <laughs> I could, but I would have to do a lot of practice and a lot of work, and I'm not gonna. <laughs> so that's really. Just I think you should. <laughs> I just there, do. It's not gonna be. Th- it's not that difficult. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there was a moment in time. There was a bead store downtown. They offered like a jewelry making class. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna sign up for that. Tap into my creativeness. It was the most frustrating thing I have ever done in my life because. I was so intent on making sure it was exactly what I wanted that I couldn't, Mm. like I would pick things I liked instead of things that went together. And by the time I was done, I'm like, I don't know who's wearing this, but I am not. (laughs) (laughs) But clearly I've paid for it. Try to sell it now. (laughs) Hopefully somebody (laughs) likes it. Yeah. No, I had no intention of trying to sell it. I just thought it would be fun to start creating and wearing your own jewelry. Mm. And then after I made my first necklace, I'm like, that is not for me. That is not for me at all. You know, I think adults struggle with letting go mm-hmm. when yeah. they when they go into something a class oh man so much fear it's amazing and that's what i teach a lot of children aren't like that no mm-hmm. that's taught and it's it like is. where what where, where do we lose that you know it's so it's like sometimes you gotta it's gotta look bad before it looks good yeah and, and be okay with <laughs> right. that yeah. and be okay with that process i mean there are things that i create and make that i don't always like in the beginning mm-hmm. and i need to step away when i start getting frustrated yeah you, it's time to stop, mm-hmm. get back to it in an hour or the next day. And what's amazing is I can take the plastic off of a sculpture that I thought was so bad. Yeah. And the next day realize actually it wasn't at all as bad as I thought it was. <laughs> it's just so perspective. it's just knowing yeah. when to stop, yeah. mm-hmm. take relax, break. take a break, mm-hmm. get back to it and stay with the process because eventually you'll make something you like. You just yeah. will mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. if you mm-hmm. stick with it. Mm-hmm. That's true. So I don't mm-hmm. think we actually covered ever... I mean, we've probably said it, not with Sarah and Nicole, but yeah. the Paris Gibson Square Museum of Art is modern art. It is not necessarily that Western style art that people would expect in Great Falls. So why don't you tell us in better words than that about the experience at the square and the type of art people will actually find there? Mm-hmm. Well, it's an interesting setup. Yeah, that's what um, I do. So, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I think, um, well, it, I guess we could say, you know, Paris Gibson Square Museum of Art exhibits contemporary art. There we and go. within the capsule of what is contemporary art, anything is possible, mm. which means that we have representational art, which means things that we see in nature and we see it on a canvas. And we have. And cowboys. And cowboys <laughs> and horses. And horses. Yeah. And cows. And yes. Bison. Because those artists are working within the realm of contemporary period as artists. Mm. Um, and we also have artists working in a bunch of different fields, video art, you know, performance art, uh, abstract, you know, non-objective, uh, conceptual, uh, you know, anything in under the sea that people are really diving into to express their, their feelings or thoughts about things in the world, you know, and I think that might be one of the bigger pictures that we look at at Paris Gibson Square Museum of Art is when the artists come to present their artwork, what is it that they're saying, you know, with their artwork? Hmm. Are we, are we, you know, what are the different, what's the purpose between your, be, behind your artwork? What are you trying to say? Or are you saying you only are looking at the work itself stands alone with no verbal explanation. And some artists do enjoy that as well. Hmm. It's I think Sarah has something. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I would <laughs> say, you know, they do, but often that's not what we're getting. Most people really do have something to say. Mm-hmm. Although, you know, some of our textile artists, you know, like Ashley Blaylock, mm-hmm. you know, um, 
she was just flipping this idea and scale on its head, you know, so there was a conversation around it, but mm-hmm. I'm trying to remember how much she dove into actually discussion of it. I guess she did. No, she at did. The top. Yeah. It had a lot to do with like women's posi- role mm-hmm. in society and mm-hmm. yeah. the things Interesting. that represent women over time. But yeah. I, I do you feel know. like most of the artists we have do mm-hmm. have something to tell us. Mm-hmm. They're, mm-hmm. they're doing it for a reason. I mean, they're, mm-hmm. you know, and yeah. it's important and it's for, it's to, for your audience, for our audiences to think and reflect upon the themselves in their life and how it relates to what they're mm-hmm. creating yeah because I think we all absolutely can can create to every single piece that's ever been shown in our museum right. in some way shape or form mm-hmm. and this isn't like a museum you're going to find anywhere else in Montana or even really in the northwest I, I don't know I would say that Paris Gibson Square Museum of Art is a part of a select group of sister museums in Montana that really support um, contemporary art of mm. the West and mm-hmm. the region. And I would say the Missoula Art Museum is one of those institutions, the Yellowstone Museum mm-hmm. of Art as well, the Holter Museum of Art. And then there are... There's the Hockaday. And the Hockaday. That one has a more of... That more one Western is an interesting institution community. because it combines... Uh, it, it's similar to the Russell in a way where yeah. they're they're mm-hmm. looking at Western art, but they're also looking at the work that we're showing as well. Hmm. You know, I think so. our institution as a whole is different in the sense that our, our educational programming is very robust. Mm-hmm. Yes. And our outreach mm-hmm. is so extensive that I think that sets us a bit apart it does. Um, from the other museums. Mm-hmm. Our space and our building alone houses more space, allows us to act as a cultural center. So we're a museum. People can rent uh, some of our spaces for events or conferences and also an entire downstairs education department mm-hmm. where we offer ceramics classes and fire yeah. kilns. Yeah. There's not another museum here that does that yeah. in Montana. No. Yeah. We yeah. So we are the only one in that regard. We have a we have an education studio arts education center mm-hmm. where not only can you learn about art, you make the art and you develop yourself to one day many artists in this community have become artists by starting their career at Paris Gibson mm. Square Museum and now of art selling their, the their art mm-hmm. in our yeah. gift shop and things That's like that. Really neat. And these yeah. are many are adults that just found their passion after they retired, mm-hmm. or they just wanted a, something to do on the side, you know, because mm-hmm. they're you know something different than their normal job. And it's wonderful to watch their progression. And then we've even had teens that've been part of my mm-hmm. curative art collective teen program that now is teaching classes at the museum oh, for no. other oh, teens. Cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it's one of the most popular youth classes is is a youth drawing class. Yeah, right. Messina Seyu, and uh, met her, I guess. Four years ago now. Mm-hmm. Wow. I know my my mom, I'm so proud of her because she's always had this creativity in her and she hasn't really dove into it or let it come out or explored it as much uh, until, you know, more recent years. And I'm so proud of her. And she she got started with a lot of classes doing pottery um, at the square. And I know she loved those and that yeah. gave her a really good base to grow from. Well, she yeah. stopped in one day and we yeah. were talking about art and she does watercolor mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, she's doing classes and now. And so yeah. we were we're talking about that and I'm like you're an artist well no it's really hard like she talked <laughs> yeah, about know. it like a real artist because she's mm-hmm. like there's so much you have to study and just if you do this and mm-hmm. what it will do and I'm like mm-hmm. seems like you're a bit of an yeah. artist I was like you are an artist mom <laughs> she is an artist, and she yeah. listens to all of these so mom you're an artist it's not just me everyone thinks so <laughs> yeah there I second go. that yes. yeah. it's, it's interesting right that claiming of identity mm-hmm. right well I yeah. think people shy mm-hmm. away from it I grew up with a guy um, I have to imagine is a lot like Lee Steen and he would create just amazing things a little bit like Alex Smithson out of Mm -hmm. scrap metal Mm -hmm. Um, but he would also do a lot of welding of horseshoes and just a creative fella and I one time referred to him as an artist and he looks at me and I'm like look at what you're doing like Mm -hmm. just look at this I said not everyone can do that he goes well, I was just bored. I'm like, I don't, I don't care what the deal is. Like, you really, truly are an artist. And he would, you know, back before there were laser cutters, he'd make signs and metal art just because he was bored, so obviously. Like outflow but outflow of creativity. But this yeah. old farmer rancher dude is not going to identify as an <laughs> artist. And I think... No, you kind of are because yeah. this is really artistic what you're doing and putting things together. So. Creating. Yeah. I yeah. think sometimes people 
have a hard time using or you know calling themselves an artist if they didn't go to college for right, it right. or they're not and, at a certain like, and that's level. just not true mm-hmm. um like i said i was self-taught for you know 20 years yeah and but it took me it wasn't until i was 24 years old that i felt comfortable finally telling people i'm, I'm an, an artist, artist. Mm-hmm. it took a while yeah because right. i felt like oh maybe i'm not good <laughs> enough how you know similar to what these other people are saying yeah or maybe so. you feel there's like an element of judgment that happens if you're like claiming I'm an artist and this is what I've produced. Maybe you like get to separate yourself from judgment if you're like, oh, I'm just doing it for fun, like not an artist. Like, right. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I, um, I years ago fell in love with a woman here in town who, who creates patterns for quilting but using fusible interfacing. So you just have to kind of iron on the scrap paper pieces, the scraps of material onto the interfacing and then you fold and sew it turns out to be a beautiful quilt and so I've made these quilts and people are like oh you're a quilter I'm like oh no 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 (laughs) because I have known (laughs) quilters and they can put a quilt together not using these patterns and and I just found it to be easy, but I didn't want to classify myself as a quilter. <laughs> oh, but you oh, still can. There's, there's, different, <laughs> yeah. there's different There's different technologies. Things always get enhanced to make things mm. a little easier. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And there are professional quilt makers, art quilt artists that are using those same techniques. Exactly. So <laughs> and I they're just, selling their work. See, there well, you, you make it. It's quicker in my yeah. mind. I've never tried to make a quilt another way, but <laughs> this was just beautiful. People were like, oh, you made that? I'm like, well, yeah. yeah. He, he, he. Why are you so surprised? I'm <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's exactly how right. you should approach it. Well, yes, this is what Obviously, I do on the side. Yes. <laughs> And it's I, one of my many talents. Yeah, and I yeah. think that's the artist's choice, right, Sarah? Mm-hmm. I mean, you can have a painter who's going down to, and and ceramic artists who can go down into the earth and get their pigments and their mm-hmm. materials and create it from scratch. Oh, my. You know, if they wanted to do that, and that's part of their process, and mm. they do do it. Or you can be an artist who is really into the new mediums and technologies and paint materials and glazes, and you're just all about... Mm the vibrant colors and and the crazy stuff that's being invented all the time and that's part of your work and and you can utilize whatever you want to do right that's the beauty about you know art in general yeah. anything goes <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it does any type of material process you know everybody's going to have their opinions so, on things mm-hmm. and some artists do like in my figure drawing class right now people have a certain way of drawing they come in already with their wheelhouse that Mm. they already know well i'm teaching them techniques that they haven't learned before and boy is it hard to get them to Mm. change (laughs) i bet especially i'm like move into the figure they're like (laughs) Like, i'm just staying with the contour (laughs) lines okay yeah you know but but is one way better than another not necessarily i think it's just all what what you care about yeah Mm -hmm. how you're going to get to your end so i've talked a lot about the leasting collection which you can see anytime you come, it's part of the permanent collection at the square, but you all have changing exhibits all the time there that move in and move out. So we get that opportunity. Talk to us about the current exhibits, not the permanent okay. ones. I don't know how to say that. <laughs> I know what you mean. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for helping an old gal out. <laughs> well, I, what we have is we have galleries that are permanently installed right so the terry carson pillars the ruins those are permanent in that gallery because of their size and space requirements and we have the lee steens and those are always on exhibit which is a favorite of the community right sarah (laughs) and all the third graders just love it to death or get frightened and run the other way yeah that's the feeling that you're supposed to have (laughs) madi who used to co-host with us yeah she's not a fan of the lee steen she thinks they're creepy i love them Maybe we should say what they are because we haven't actually heard oh. Oh. to help well, get a visual in people's minds. We just expect that you've listened to every episode <laughs> up until true. now. That's true. But they're life size. I always refer to them as life size stick figures. That's pretty spot on. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, I, well, one thing that I think now that I'm thinking about it that is a part of. Paris Gibson Square Museum of Art is the support of outsider artists. So outsider mm-hmm. visionary artists. And those are artists who are like Lee Steen and who create 
work because they have a vision there and they live on the outside of society and working not working in the mainstream arts world and mm. and their work um stands alone in in what it represents mm. so uh that is what Listine is and that is what that gallery is is really focusing on the outsider artist um mm. but that is one of our permanent exhibits and uh, currently we have a, an exhibit that is a temporary exhibit, but is formulated out of our permanent collection of art. So our artwork that is um, were gifts of art to the museum via the artist or via patrons or via organizations. There's a, diff- there's a variety of different ways in which these works of art came into our collection that we own. We take care of for the sake of the community so that we can provide and build a a timeline in the history of art of this region and provide um, and be like a storehouse for it so that we can continuously exhibit it and share and teach the history of art of the region to the community. So the object number is an exhibit. the name of the (laughs) the exhibit. It's called object number um, and um, is an exhibit about collecting art in contemporary art museums and it's about our collection and it's um, about showcasing the art and it's about showcasing the museum the work that happens in a museum that people are not particularly familiar with the roles that are there and the importance of caring for the collection which ties into a larger project which is the collections assessment for preservation award that we received so Uh Yes, so it is really about focusing on um, um, a history of collecting at the museum and its future and what we int- intend to do mm-hmm. and and how important that is for all of us in all of us in Great Falls, Montana, to have this um, collection of work. Mm-hmm. There's also I like a, a tribute to to veterans or people who served in the military, and that's been up for what ten years or so. Jean Price's. Uh, yes, thank oh, you. Yes. Thank you. Three thousand yes. and mm-hmm. counting. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. That's yeah. that is a permanent exhibit mm-hmm. as well. Okay. Yeah. That our, one's neat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And th- did you want to say something about that? Were you saying something? No. <laughs> so I, I didn't want to interrupt. She's just sitting there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, so that mm-hmm. is a permanent display of a work in our collection, mm-hmm. and Jean Price. Um, for those in the community who know her, really was a patron of Paris mm. Gibson Square Museum of Art for many years. She served on the um, acquisitions, um, collections, and exhibitions committee. She was in the legislature. She mm. really was um, an activist for artists and the community and education. And she one helped. of the founders of yes. of the museum in the seventies. Mm. Exactly. She, oh wow! Mm-hmm. Yeah, she helped start it with the junior league exactly as part of that group Mm -hmm. the building itself really is a a piece of art as Mm -hmm. well i mean it's one of the the oldest buildings in great falls uh maybe speak a little bit about the building itself because it provides so much character and there's so much history and Mm -hmm. stories just with the building and I think it helps when someone knows what that building is, that it's a little bit easier to understand why it's laid out the way the galleries are. Mm-hmm. Oh. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Go yeah. ahead, yeah. Sarah. Well, it was built in 1896. Wow. As Central High School. The first school. Yeah. Mm. He had a massive clock tower on t- the top of the school. <laughs> you know, it's a Renaissance revival style architecture, and the architect was from Boston. Um, I've, I've found some old documents that we're talking about the funding and how difficult it was actually to finally get it funded to build mm. build it really and the back and forth yeah it was it was interesting I, I can't remember specific details so I don't want to start sharing that and be wrong <laughs> hey, but I have read through we it we love and I'm like, generalness here <laughs> I, I think I, I feel claims, like the budget yeah. what might have been around Sixty thousand at the oh, most. Oh my gosh! Yeah, and, it and it's so funny. Like the a million or something. Wow! Like that. I don't know. I no, thought it was like I way up there. So. I don't. I don't know. I don't remember. But a lot of money, especially for, for that, that time. Yeah. And um, you We've know, both read a lot of materials. I think there is some kind of confusion about that. We have mm. to find the. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thing. those yeah. those yeah. details hmm. from then, but, but we're not alone in this. This is yeah. one of those those history <laughs> projects that nobody yeah. seems to know yeah. the, quite the actual quite definition the real of, story it. of. <laughs> Even well, though it, we look at all the papers and <laughs> even the people who wrote the papers are it's kind a of little confused about what they're writing. What's happening? Yeah, exactly. well, and it was so far initially far out of town. 
when it was built, correct? Yeah, yeah it was all prairie yeah. land. Mm-hmm. I mean, the original photographs that I've seen are just so pretty. Yeah, not it's a thing. It's gorgeous and so weird to think of it surrounded by nothing. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. it's in the heart of the community yeah. now. Yeah, mm-hmm. 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 and that clock tower, you know, was really meant. You know, Paris Gibson, you know, the founder of Great Falls, really wanted uh, everything. It was of a time then, I think, uh, Industrial Revolution era, Mm -hmm. that time was of the essence. Mm -hmm. People were on a schedule and you worked. Yeah. (laughs) So that's what that clock (laughs) tower was. Every day. (laughs) Just changed. Ticking at at you so you know. Yeah. Yeah. And then in the 30s, it transitioned into a junior high. But just so you know, the, the first class, it was, I think, 48 people. The oh. first class, mm-hmm. uh, high school class that graduated from uh, Central High School. 48. Mm. 48, wow. so small. We have a photograph of that. Mm. Oh, that's small. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then in the 70s, 75 is when the doors closed. And then in 1977 is when it opened up as an art museum. But it was always opened up as a cultural center. So mm. the um, Historic S- Society is that what they call it? So not the History Museum, oh, but the, the... Yes. Oh, yeah. They were... Cascade County Historical Cascade. Society. Yes. They, they their apart. offices were in the museum mm-hmm. huh. at that time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's 44,000 square feet, and the attic spa- space alone is 33,000 cubic oh feet. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Um, huge. Yeah. Huge space. Mm-hmm. And surprisingly, we still never have enough room. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> no. We don't. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a little kitchen in there, too. There's a yeah. little kitchen. <laughs> One day we'd like to bring a cafe back or at least mm-hmm. have coffee and pastries in there. And I loved it. So when I'm the putting a shout out yeah. for yeah. businesses there out there. Anyone. If you're listening to this. Mm-hmm. Anyone. We do have the cafe functioning on rotation during important events. Yes. Mm-hmm. So if you'd like to be a part of that, right, Sarah? That's right. <laughs> now, <laughs> the other thing about the building, which... I find interesting is I do believe it was part of the Thunderbolt and mm. Lightfoot movie. Yes. Like it, it something exploded. Blew up. Oh, no, oh that was tele- telethon. Telethon. Mm-hmm. telethon. Is it telethon? Something like that. Yeah, it wasn't telethon. It's telethon. It's telethon. Okay. In the 70s. <laughs> I think that movie or early 80s With or mid 70s is when it blew up. And I've met people that, oh, yeah, I stood across the street, watched yeah, the whole thing. Yeah. Watched it blow up. And we should mm-hmm. say that was like a what little does, annex, right? Okay. Well, it's not yes. the actual Yes, building. it was the annex. Because <laughs> all I've ever heard is this movie and they blew up yeah. Paris Gibson Square. Yeah. I'm like, uh, You're like, no, they didn't. Yeah. The like, it seems still, still pretty there. original yeah. to me. No. <laughs> like, like an, I don't know what you guys are looking at. <laughs> no, it, was like, yeah. and it was huge yeah. brick building on the south side. It was an addition to the school to, mm-hmm. to fit all the students, basically. Oh. And Were the they, gym. Did and they want to get rid pool. of it? And this was just a convenient way to be like, hey, yeah. there's yes. a movie coming. That's what I heard. <laughs> yeah. I think so. Mm. Yeah. Well, that works out. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. They got paid. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. That's for helpful. the big scene. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, what exhibits do you have coming up? Uh, Anything you can share or is it all secret until it's revealed? (laughs) Well, we also have another exhibit called, um, under the red roof, Mm. which is, um, uh, part of our love for the arts programming run by Ellie Weber, who's our director of education. And this exhibit features the art, um, of these adults from, with disabilities, um, collaborating with Easter Seals Goodwill, correct? Mm. And so you should come in and check it out because it's quite fun and lovely. Um, and the students who take part in this class really enjoy making the art. And you can really see their personalities and the different pieces that they mm. create. And Ellie created a great theme. It's kind of like under the big top, you know, circus oh, topic. Okay. But it yeah, also yeah. fits with the square, which was what her yeah. idea was under since we have roof. a red yeah. roof. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, that does work well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> coming up, we have... Um, a few events, you know, we have um, Chef Champagne and Art, which is coming up, but we have the, in terms of exhibits, in mm-hmm. terms of exhibits, we have our art auction exhibition that will be opening mm-hmm. up as During well. During Western Art Week? No, our auction is May 12th. There we go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And prior to that event, so prior to that event for a month, so opening in April, we'll have the exhibition for the um work that will be auction. in the auction hmm. fun and we'll also have great falls public school all school show okay and That's that will be on exhibit one. around mm-hmm. the same time as well for about a month in april april through may those are our, our directly next upcoming exhibits and then we have some amazing artists exhibiting over the summer hmm. um 
renowned artists Sean Chandler, uh, Robert Harrison, and um, a great exhibit um, about the life of an of a master artist named um, Morton Levine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm, a lot of good stuff coming yeah, up. Excited. And then events. So we'll have to plug those before yeah. we're done. Right. Yeah. So I assume you all know, but maybe you don't. Um, my one nugget of information, there were some artists from Easter Seals Goodwill that did some of the art for the traffic signal boxes. The Downtown Great Falls Association. Well, the tours. Goodness. The Business <laughs> Improvement District does a call to artists for the traffic signal boxes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And one of the artists that was selected a couple of years ago was one of the artists from Easter Seals Goodwill. So, mm-hmm. Fun. That's yeah. awesome. exciting. <laughs> so who knows? You, you could go see Under the Red Roof in its exhibit form and then maybe, just maybe, be able to solicit the artist and buy their work. There you go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because... There's some fun stuff out there. Yeah. Yes, there is. And you you mentioned Western Art Week. Obviously, that's a huge thing for our community coming up. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people say, oh, you know, Western art that's older, that's not contemporary. Why should people still come hang out at at Paris Gibson Square during Western Art Week? Why wouldn't you? Yeah, well, why wouldn't you? But other than that. Yeah. I think (laughs) people should take a day tour and come come, come visit us. Absolutely. You know, because we are also showing contemporary art mm-hmm. of this region of yes. the West. Of the so West. we right. sit right on in that <laughs> yes. genre. Exactly. And, you know, and with our permanent collection works on display right now, there's such a breadth of work, everything mm. from sculpture to painting, printmaking, um, uh, assemblage, yeah. you know, it's very varied you yeah. know, style, As stylistically. A, yeah. mm-hmm. So expand your thinking when you think about Western and art. And you will it see yes. some Western art too that mm-hmm. you like. Mm-hmm. I mean, if that's all you think you you focus right. on, come in because you would be surprised. Also, our gift shop mm. supports Thank you. over 50. I think we have over 60 local artists, works yeah. of art. So right. mm-hmm. there's not a contemporary art gallery mm-hmm. in Great Falls, Montana. We are the closest thing to yeah. that with our gift shop. And Which the is prices incredible. are really, you can get original yeah. works to prints to pottery, jewelry. Yeah. So if you're looking for gifts or something for your own home, I think definitely stop into mm-hmm. the yeah. Paris Gibson Square Museum of Arts gift shop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I do have to say, if you've not just done a gift shop tour of our <laughs> museums. Oh, that is a good idea. Oh, yeah. my Lord. We have some great gift shops inside our museums here. <laughs> They're true. phenomenal. That is true. That's mm-hmm. one of the best places Actually, I to go. I think always museums. I love museum gift shops. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a really it's good not point. All over all. the country. It's not weird at all, Sarah. It's not weird yeah. at all. Like, they are they are top notch. Mm-hmm. The shopping here is pretty dang cool. Yeah, you so. can get some really original things. Oh. Absolutely. Yeah, and then people are going to go, oh my goodness, where'd you get that? Mm. Well, Great it falls. wasn't from TJ Maxx. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell you that. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, I think one thing, too, like during Western Art Week, if people out there are listening, wanting to come into town, if you want a private tour, mm. a docent tour Ooh. led through our galleries, mm-hmm. you can come and you know schedule Ooh. a time. But we, we'd love to talk to people one-on-one or with groups yeah. if they want more details yeah. about what they're looking at. That's We'd be neat. happy to. Private tour. And, and we are, you know, this exhibit object number, this is the last, that is the last weekend for it. And we've extended it mm. specifically for Western Art Week so that individuals who come into Great Falls have the opportunity to enjoy the work of art mm. in that collection. Well, mm-hmm. and how cool that it is the history of art mm. of this mm. area, mm-hmm. which doesn't get any Westerner. I mean, mm-hmm. you can yeah. move a few <laughs> more miles to the west, but we're the west it's, people. It's pretty west, yeah. <laughs> when yes. you look at a map or a globe, <laughs> we're the west. We are the west. Yes. So it's Montana. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yes. these are not things that would be for sale. This is just for appreciation. This mm-hmm. is our permanent collection. Yeah. You yes. shouldn't. You can drop money there, donate money Please to the do. square, yeah. but you're not taking. <laughs> You're not taking home the work from the right. exhibit. Right. You but can from do the it at gift the gift shop. shop. Mm-hmm. But it's a good taste of what's to come in the art auction. Mm. So, yeah, you so know, come back for the art auction. The kind of, yeah. um, in May. This is the kind of representation of our art auction as well. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, anytime there's an opportunity to drink in public, um, <laughs> my attention is captured. She's and all so about that. Yeah. You have brought back and revamped an idea that this community used to have. Tell us about Chef's Champagne and Art and when it's happening 
and what people can expect beyond drinking in public. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chef Champagne and Art is finally back after COVID uh, on February 3rd. So Friday, February 3rd from 6 to 9 p.m. Mm-hmm. And what this event is, is we're pairing local chefs with art this year. So mm-hmm. something that's changed. So anyway, people get to come. Long story short, you get mm-hmm. to come. You get a glass of champagne. You get to t- taste all these amazing hors d'oeuvres. And then you get to vote on People's Choice Award for Best Chef as well as Best Table Display. What we've done different this year mm-hmm. is the chefs had an opportunity to choose from um, one of three works of art. And I worked with Nicole Evans and our operations manager, Sarah Johnson, to decide which works of art to present to them to choose from. And Ooh. these are, are works of art from our permanent collection. Nice. And so they got to pick a piece of art to enhance their table display draw and response, draw inspiration also. And they can also draw inspiration for the food that they're cooking as well mm-hmm. with it. So we thought that was really kind that of fun. That is really cool. Yeah, that is a because really neat way to pair everything. Mm-hmm. What we've not talked about is the creativity that goes into food. And mm-hmm. one day maybe we'll have an episode with a chef. On food creativity. But you look at the local food that exists here and how you can play with that from an art standpoint. What the presentation, the way food goes together, the way it's going to taste and Mm -hmm. all those different flavors. And then you add in that element of make this food connect with Mm -hmm. this piece of art. Mm -hmm. You'd be like, oh, this is what this piece of art is saying to me. So it's going to be spicy. And it's going to be feeling it. And then you're tasting it. This is just going to have, this one's going to have a lot of gravy, like, (laughs) (laughs) you know, or sauces or whatever it might be. I just think that is such a neat way to combine the two worlds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're really excited and we're, you know, very fortunate and blessed to have these chefs come in and, and be a part of this because this is a fundraiser for the museum. Mm -hmm. So these chefs are doing this out of the goodness of their hearts. So I'm going to put a plug in. And for pride and for pride and titles of. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I want to share the names of them while I'm on. Okay. So we have um, uh, chef Greg Rogers from Celtic Cowboy, Mm -hmm. Rachel Heaton from Ranches at Belt Creek. We Mm -hmm. have Eric Roach from Highgate Senior Living. We have Carrie and Melissa from All the Things Charcuterie. And who is my last person? I I do this every single time. Oh, Jim (laughs) Dulemeyer from Meadowlark Country Mm, Club. Yeah. Yes. So all of them are competing. And then our our judges are uh, Mike Callahan from Inbar. We have Mm -hmm. Rhonda Atkins from Pizzazz. Mm. And Susan, Sarah Thomas from uh, Benefice. The head mm-hmm. chef there. Oh, and it's called nice. Thomas Cuisine is her business. Oh, huh. and then we nice. have our very own Shannon Newth here. That Yay. will be our MC for the I'm evening. So, so I'm super excited. Yes, I'm so and excited. And we have Melissa Desculius who is performing acoustically. Yeah, she's wonderful that night. And yeah. then we have about 19 silent auction. Um, items, but they're experiences this year. Ooh, so I it's not, we're those. not selling art. We're selling. Am I allowed to bet trips, on them as the MC? girls <laughs> nights out, <laughs> men's night out, uh, wow. nights at spas. cabins and spas and Ooh. Love uh, it. I'll just put it out there. If one of your chefs be, or one of your judges become ill <laughs> or trapped in a basement, you know what? And you need a replacement. That. It's a very specific. I, I am willing to eat the food. I okay. I cannot. Are you a tell foodie, you, Rebecca? Uh, I'm not going to go that far. <laughs> I'm going to say I like to eat food. Just trying to <laughs> establish some credential for you here. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> if you're a foodie, no, yeah. 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 Um, just like I'm not a quilter, I'm not going to say I'm a foodie. <laughs> <laughs> I eat food. Yeah. And yeah. this is also, so this is not at the museum, but it's at the Newberry. At the Newberry. And we had our episode last week was with Scott Reasoner, one of the people. N- people. I was- one know, of the owners one of the people of yeah. the Newberry mm-hmm. so we talked about that being used as an event space because it's just a cool it's mm-hmm. just a really neat space yeah, yeah. you yeah. know space. some people go oh it's not at the museum anymore so we've we've started taking some of our larger fundraisers off the property because we are running out of space mm. you know yeah. the yeah. amount of people that are interested in coming to our events we can't physically fit it's them in the problem. space yeah. so it is a good problem <laughs> so 
I just tell people just come in on your downtime yeah. to the museum. Give well, them a taste. If you wouldn't yeah. have blown up that building back in the yeah, right, <laughs> we could I mean, be using on. that today. Yeah. <laughs> could really, the use gymnasium. That we could have used the gymnasium <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. for our Dang events. It. Dang Short-sightedness. It. <laughs> but then, guess what? The museum would have had to continue raising <laughs> right. money to fix yeah. that too. Uh-huh. Well, and I can just imagine the structural integrity of the building when they decided to blow it up. Yeah, wasn't must have just solid. been beyond. I don't think yeah. it helped room eighteen. <laughs> yeah, that's one classroom. That that, like Uh-oh. the floor is just lifting. It, strange things are happening yeah, down yeah. in that room. And if you want to know yeah. more about room strange 18, things. you can uh, get that on previous podcast mm-hmm. episodes. That's true. And it is the ghost amazing. Stories. amazing. Yeah. This is the best, one of the best episodes we've yeah. ever had on planet Earth. That's Any podcast. And, we, yeah. and the stories just grow, right, Sarah? Yeah. And you know, it's, it's the real deal. We're not. It's not, we're not, not making stuff up. Yeah. Who yeah. wants to hear another ghost story of oh, roommate? Team? Yeah. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> All day long. Please share. All day long. Yeah. Oh, there is one quick yes, one. Yes, there's a quick yes. one. Please. Well, I had finished up a workshop on a Saturday or it was Sunday. I, no, it was a Saturday. The museum closes at three. My workshop closed at three. Well, Brent Visti, our gift shop assistant, right. went downstairs uh, just to see Closed if down, I had locked I think, everything up. Yeah. He walks into the room and the radio says, well, hello, Brent. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, what? no. <laughs> yeah. And the radio wasn't on. on. Okay. Right. I was just going to ask, was it on? What station? Was it? Like, no. Nope. What no. was happening? Don't try to justify <laughs> well, it, hello, Shannon. Brent. Just really, yeah. very clearly to him. And he well, came to me. He's like, nice. Sarah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And the funny part is, is like he said, he tried to turn it off, but then realized it, was <laughs> it not wasn't on. even on. And then he just leaves the room and he's like, well, bye now. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <Thanks>. Goodbye. <laughs> Oh. Weird. That was more recent. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. was um, about two months ago. Yeah, maybe? oh, two months okay. Ago. Yeah. And wow. if I remember correctly, Brent does. He's a potter. He yes. Is. Um, he does really cool pottery. Yeah, he does. He sells a lot yes. in the gift shop too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he made some really good sales in December. <laughs> good I yeah. saw the check. Mm-hmm. I was like, congrats. Yeah, <laughs> Chris <laughs> Heavy hitter a over here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so if more nothing stories else, like that on that other just episode, just go to the square for room eighteen. Hang yeah. out down there. See if anyone talks to you. I mean, there's the so much. There's tons <laughs> others to do there. Yeah. All I can say is, <laughs> do not stir stir it up any more yeah. than it already is. Sarah's like, I don't no, want to deal no, with this no. anymore. Yeah. No, they've left me alone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you told I yelled them at to. Them. Yeah. yeah. Since I yelled at them, <laughs> you got to establish your boundaries. Yeah. But well, they're like, ooh, you're... leave her alone. <laughs> you're taking care of their building too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So and I, good. you know, once that bat project comes through for us to do the bat mitigation in the <laughs> yes. attic yes. space, I have already recognized I need to go up there and do some talking. Yes, you <laughs> to do. The gentleman. Some preparation. Yeah. Just let him know because like what's I don't know yeah. how he's going to respond to ooh. the activity. Uh, so you could have more stories for us after that. He could be really bad. Yeah, yeah. That, I don't know. Hmm. That upstairs had been used for some performing arts. Is it still? No. No. Because no. no, it would it would need a lot. Um, you know, once once the cleanup of the bat issues gone, the plan is of course to get engineers and architects in there to see what's capable yes. and what kind of load the space can actually, actually hold. Have. Sure. Mm-hmm. But ideally, we would love we foresee building potentially a visible vault um, or a vault for permanent collection, which is climate controlled, Mm. but also the space will be cleaned up that we could give tours up there, potentially have a library. I mean, the space, potentially even in a theater space or like a sitting space, something for talks and things. It would be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So we have ideas, but we have to do the proper steps. I mean, until an engineer is involved and they can assess it, we can't build. And that's why we couldn't continue in the attic. That makes sense. The theater, it just wasn't going to be, able to sustain the weight there's a few you know growing up on a farm there's been a few floors i've crossed where i'm like i don't know if this is actually gonna hold up if i take a few more steps yeah (laughs) or if my husband was by my side he might not be there very long you think it would actually be able to care we have so much stuff up there right now it's Mm -hmm. it's kind of a it's a bit of a hoarded space but you don't know you could be having a rip roaring good time and all of a sudden you're stomping and clapping and (laughs) Woohoo! Well, and then, then it starts everybody falls the floors below. Well, everybody yeah. falls through the like a cartoon. Yeah. It is a historic building, you know, and, and it deserves the attention and care that it requires, just like everything else that we hose, house mm-hmm. inside the institution that's of importance. Yeah. So, yeah. I say it's part so of our permanent out. collection. Yeah. I mean, the museum is part, part of, of our collection. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and I also always have to mention, you know, we have an entire square block 
Mm-hmm. You know, and it's a community green space. The it gardens yes, are gorgeous. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. And there's a fountain. And then, you know, we, we have quite a few sculptures out there, but hope to, you know, continue acquiring mm, right. works. More. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you I want can never have too much art on the building too. No. Ooh, that would be neat. So, so yeah. if there's any um, lighting engineers out there <laughs> that would really love to donate, <laughs> donate some, t- some lighting to <laughs> yeah, our there building, you go. come. That would, would look it. really neat, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, hopefully, we'll we'll generate some at Chef Champagne and Art. Some, I know. Just a plethora, so you can. Yeah. So you can buy people get tickets. Yeah. Yeah. What's yes. the deal? It's, um, um, Very the Newberry easy. MT. Dot com. Okay, so you so can go, go to, the new, to the new yeah, to the new okay. website. And that's where is that we the actually one spot to the get them? only spot. Okay. And we actually opened up five more tables oh, hey, that now. people can purchase. We sold out all of our tables, oh, so we decided, well, let's redesign the floor plan. And yeah, <laughs> we added five more. Great. And then there's individual tickets. So tables are six hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Individual tickets are fifty dollars. That includes two glasses of champagne. <gasps> wow! So you get and all your appetizers. Yeah, champagne, all the food. Two. That's yeah. <laughs> two She's two glasses. Even more for this now. <laughs> yeah. Free. It's a, it's a per person. person. It's yeah. in the title. We yeah, that's right. That's true. That's, yeah. Yeah. You show up, there's no champagne. People yeah. are, yeah, it's not going to go over well. Yeah. <laughs> we got a mimosa showdown happening in May. There's not really there's mimosas. No mimosas. There. Well, yeah. think about it. You Some get champagne juice. and you get all those appetizers. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's yeah. And far more. The opportunity than that. to bid on mm-hmm. experiences, which I think is yeah. really neat. And an opportunity to get all dressed up, fancied up, too, which Heck is fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we're going to also host a paddle raise. I'm going to let everybody yes, know that true. now. Bring some extra <laughs> cash in that pocket. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and what that's going to is that money will then, from the paddle raise, will be split between the historic building fund, curatorial, um, her internship, Nicole's internship program, mm-hmm. and then education for our Love for the Arts program, like our senior drawing class. Yeah, we need deal. more funds to continue that free class. Yeah. So we'll take those money and just split it up between the three departments to help us Perfect. sustain these, these programs. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. So plan now. Get your tickets now. Come see us. Come yes, hang out with us. It's the perfect Chef reason to have to come to Great Falls. It is. Or get to go. Yeah. <laughs> you get to want to put another <laughs> plug in, though, for something that's happened before that. I mean, yes. Chef Champagne and Art is a big one. That's a oh. major fundraiser. But we do have an event called A Thoughtful Response mm, on Thursday, yes. January 26th. Hmm. So next Thursday. Mm-hmm. And that's a time where you come in and we're going to be talking about two right. works of visual art from our permanent collection. And then the Cascade String Quartet from the oh, Great Falls Symphony yeah. Orchestra will be performing two music compositions in response to those mm. works of art. And it's using visual thinking strategies to, to talk about art. So the wow. audience gets a chance to... It's an art discussion. Really yeah. expand your brain yeah. there for that. Yeah, huh? it's one of probably one of the funnest events, mm. in my opinion, that we have for the community when people come because the conversations can ju- just continue mm. for quite some time. And you facilitate that one. Yeah. Yeah, Nicole and has those, as, has as well, mm-hmm. and then Alyssa Rogro, yeah, the them. viola player. And those yes. happen throughout the year. We do correct? that twice a year. Okay, mm-hmm. twice yeah, a year. Yeah, okay. one in the winter and one in uh, late late spring, early summer. Mm-hmm. Yes, and uh, the Arts on Fire event is that happening this year as mm-hmm. well? Okay. Yes, and the date is the second Saturday of September. Okay. I believe it's September twelfth. I think it's oh, the is ninth. it the ninth? This year's the ninth. Whatever the look. second Saturday is, yes. <laughs> One of those. Second Saturday of 2023 yes. in mm-hmm. September. Mm-hmm. That's pretty simple. And yeah. that's always a big event for our mm-hmm. community. And that's a, a free, fun one. free community event. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And free. I want everyone to know, too, that the, the Paris Gibson Square Museum of Art has free admission. Mm-hmm. That's huge. All the like, time. That's amazing. All the time. Yes. Mm-hmm. So no excuses for not coming. Right. You can go as many times as you want in and out as much as you want. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and the programming that we provide, a lot of it is also at no cost, especially mm-hmm. exhibition-related programming. So on March 10th, we have an expert panel discussion where museum professionals from around the state of Montana are going to be coming to talk about what do museum collections mean mm-hmm. and how do, and how does it mean in terms of their personal space of work mm-hmm. and what does it mean in general um, to be responsible for a collection of artwork. Hmm. So it's, and those are free and open to the public and to people who want to learn more about that. So Which is we're very lucky so, to have them come. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that's so like, so undervalued, I think, the fact that all of this is provided at minimal to no cost to people. Like, it's incredible the experiences that people can have there 
that costs them nothing. Yeah. Can yeah. you think of a more affordable place <laughs> no, to come seriously, have a weekend right? getaway or a vacation? Seriously. Then Great Great Falls. Yeah. Exactly. Come hang out with you guys. Yeah. Yes. It, I mean, they're honestly, the amount of no cost mm-hmm. or low cost experiences that can be had here yeah. that are really world way. class mm-hmm. people. Come on. Yeah. It's a really yes. great way to, to do an affordable getaway. Absolutely. I spend my <laughs> life telling people to come to Great Falls and I just don't understand why have everybody has I mean, one point right. four million people have figured it out. It's true. But more. Yeah. So you know it's amazing how many out of out of state guests the mm. museum gets. And yeah, people from all over the world. Mm. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's so neat. It is yeah. so the much summers fun. here. We just, I, I feel like we get more out of town guests in the summers than we do our local community. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's great though, that people are making that mm-hmm. a stop when they come here yeah. as they should. Yes. And mm-hmm. who is funner than a bunch of artists <laughs> and <laughs> historians? True. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's nothing funner than that. No. Nope. I mean, no our staff is pretty fabulous. Out with. <laughs> you know, we have a really yeah. good group of people working for the museum and. Yeah. You know, anybody you come and talk, you know, come in contact with, you'll have a good conversation yeah. with. Mm-hmm. And are you open seven days a week? What's a quick rundown of your hours? Yeah. <laughs> it's by, uh, six days a week. Okay. Six days yep. a week. And so Monday through Friday, 10 to 5, but Tuesdays we have extended hours. So Tuesdays mm. we're open 10 to 9 p.m. Oh, wow. So let's just say you get out of work and you're yeah. like, I'm going to go, I'm going to go have dinner and then I'm going to run by the museum yeah. and take a look at the exhibits. That's why we're open late. So yeah. Come mm-hmm. in. So people can, and then there's yeah. artists that are taking ceramics often. That's an open studio night that they can come in and continue oh, practicing nice. between classes. Mm-hmm. And then on Saturdays we're open 10 to 3. Closed on Sunday. Closed mm-hmm. on Sundays, Sunday. closed on Monday. I was wrong. I'm Five sorry. Days I forget. Week. Five days. Five <laughs> days. Oh my gosh. Is that just in the winter? Or and is, no, well, that, that's only... kind of new for the square. Yeah. Okay. You know, this physical year was the when we decided mm-hmm. we would close on Mondays because okay. we're pretty slow on Mondays and it mm-hmm. gives the staff time to catch up on some things without interruption. Yeah. 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 Yep. <laughs> but studio art classes. We get that. Yeah, we get that. We get that. <laughs> Um, so sorry for the error, people. Tuesday hey, through Saturday. You're new to the job. We get it. <laughs> we get it. it takes ten years before you really know what's really going know. on. I got four more to go. <laughs> yeah. What Very are we funny. missing? Anything um, else we should know? You know the high points. What high points are we missing? Because I know there's more we have not talked about. Just have to have you back. <laughs> huh? Perfect. I think we should talk more about the cap assessment and what a oh. wonderful award that was. There we oh, go. We can talk Award about winning. It. I mean, yes. this is kind of something that is important to museums across the United States. It's an opportunity to have their collections assessed by um, experts, uh, expert assessors. So we have one individual coming who is going to assess the collection, the artwork, and that person is coming from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, and I'm blanking on the institute that they're from, but we also it's prestigious. Have, yes, it's a it prestigious is, yes, institute. Very <laughs> prestigious. It's the preventative conservation uh, conservationist from the Midwest Art Conservation Center of Minneapolis, Minnesota. Oh my goodness! So when uh, by applying to this program, we um, are getting an opportunity to have outside eyes from specialists to come in to help us so that we can get a report that gives us findings that we need in order to uh, provide uh, stats and information that will be great support for grant writing. Oh. And we'll have a building assessor that comes along with the collections assessor and that individual is from um, A&E Architects in Missoula um, and we don't mind saying his name because he's awesome. Paul Filicetti. He <laughs> <laughs> loves Paul. Yeah. You do. Yes. And he also, um, you know, comes to Great Falls a lot as he grew up here. Oh, oh nice. Good yeah. deal. So um, these two um, individuals were, are really going to help us see the needs that we have. We know what we need, <laughs> but we might not know everything. Right. Mm-hmm. And we don't know the details. I and, think that's what's always nice know. about us kind of an uh, outside set of eyes to come in and go I'm thinking this but I don't really know if that's real you Mm -hmm, know mm -hmm. or what am I missing that I haven't identified yet so Mm -hmm. well we need the report I mean that report will be a wealth of information and allow us Mm -hmm. yes for you know to to defend our causes you know the museum (laughs) has things it needs Mm -hmm. permanent collection 
has a lot of needs. Mm -hmm. And one of those needs is climate control and a space that Mm -hmm. we can care for it. You can't have fluctuating temperatures all the time and expect the artwork isn't going to expand and contract. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it's... Yeah, so the square, we're moving in those directions as we're growing, yes. that we're moving in to be able to, to, to have all of this appropriate so the and work I is think, cared for. I think that's, for me, one of the neatest things about museums is the science that goes into lighting, uh, mm-hmm. not direct light, and the heat, yep. and the right. the whole thing. And it never really hit me until I had done the Titanic exhibit. Okay. And so when we went through and saw that, there was so much low lighting because of the delicate nature of everything that mm-hmm. was on display. I mean, it was at least in glass cases. You couldn't accidentally touch it and put your <laughs> oils on it. Right. But there's so many concerns that you have to be concern, uh, aware, aware of, of while mm-hmm. you're trying to preserve art. And it's just the simple things that you don't think about, like the way the light shines on it. Or exactly. So long it's moron Mm. accidentally touches it with their finger, (laughs) breaks a barrier, you know, those type of things that will cause the art to deteriorate and things you don't think about as normal human beings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, you know, the historic architect will be able to let us know what we need, what we, what our building needs. Yeah. Which is working together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Exactly. And that's helping also with this bat mitigation project, which we'll find out in the next two to three weeks if we've been funded. Mm, Um, Fingers crossed. Because it's all interweaves, you Mm. know, all the information is beneficial to all levels of institutional care. Right, Mm. Sarah? So we're just um, looking forward to it and, and and I think it's going to be a good great. I know I'm excited. <laughs> I mean, Nicole took the time to write for this, and it's a really competitive program. So to mm. be awarded it was a big deal. Yeah, mm-hmm. we've gotten a lot of press over it too, so we're grateful good. for that. Yeah, I mean, good. we we really like to share with the community what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, so everybody can follow follow yeah. along yeah. with our progression. Yeah, and that's the big part of it is the awareness, right? Mm-hmm. The awareness level for our community, and to you know, we just want to be open. We want to share. What are we doing? What do we need? Mm-hmm. Why do we need it? Yeah. How, what, and what do you have to do with any of this? Because, <laughs> you know, yeah. most people might not be aware that they're part of the biggest picture of everything that we do <laughs> at the museum. Yeah. You know? Well, and we do it for them. Mm-hmm. Exactly. We do it was mm-hmm. not for us. Yeah. Mm-mm. Yeah. You know, it is because we care, you know, deeply care and are passionate about the arts all the way mm-hmm. around. And mm-hmm. we all understand it in and out. But we do it for the community. And it's been really nice over the past four years of seeing things grow and community engagement grow. We're grateful for our community. With these fundraising efforts and fundraisers, we realize that everybody's supporting each other because we're not a huge community. So we're all dipping into the same well. Yeah. And, and we're aware of that. Mm -hmm. And we just want to, you know, let everyone know how grateful we are for those that do support us, for those that are members of our museum, that $35 individual membership helps pay a bill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's very expensive to just for the facilities to just for gas just for the heat for that huge building yeah so we need those funds or we can't grow and expand and so anyway thank you for the community (laughs) you know yeah so there's your call um if you if the fun of drinking champagne and eating food and voting (laughs) on that was not enough of a reason You could be doing something more with your time Mm -hmm. when you're here in Great Falls. So Mm -hmm. make it a point. Come have a great weekend on February 3rd. 3rd. That's exactly what I was going to (laughs) say. And uh, then you can do the event. You can tour the exhibitions that Mm -hmm. are or the exhibits that are at the square. Even in a private tour. Yep, you mm-hmm. could do a whole museum weekend. You could do Hit art along the, the trails. I'm telling you, if you need help planning your itinerary, we're available, mm-hmm. Shannon and I. Um, that is true. Just by simply <laughs> calling 406-761-4436. I think we're the only podcast in the world that gives out phone numbers for you to call. <laughs> That's Follow on our social channels. There's all kinds of info on there as well. You can, or go to our website, mm-hmm. visit greatfallsmontana.org. And that's all you really need to know. Oh, we haven't made this disclaimer in a while. Rate, review, and subscribe. Oh, yeah. Tell your friends about this.
Jeez. Don't just keep it to yourself. <laughs> Spread the word. Exactly. Be kind. Share. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Share mm-hmm. with others. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Yeah, thank you Again, uh, developing the time to telling people all about the square and the art and the exhibits that are there. And thanks for what you do to keep up such yeah. a great place. Yeah, it's important well, for our community. You. Maintaining yeah. a museum isn't just about art, no. <laughs> even though that's what you're going in there for. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of other things that are happening. So thank you. And thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate all you do, too. Mm -hmm. And until we see your, whoever you are listening to this podcast, (laughs) until we see your bright, smiling, happy, healthy face here in Great Falls, we hope you are creating amazing memories with your friends and family wherever you are. We'll see you soon. We are no damn experts as the recorded claims from Great Falls, Montana, covering what you need to know about this amazing damn town.